Hello, MGTOW. Hello, men. This is Howard Dare. Thanks for stopping by. So, I want to raise the question, can women see reality? Because here's the thing. I'm looking through my comments section lately, and I'm looking at the comments of some of the women, and they seem to be of the mind that if society would just give them more stuff, and if men would just stop being so terrible and so evil and oppressive, that things would basically work themselves out. And, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion, as I see it. And I'm not going to put anybody on the spot for their opinion. But the facts just don't bear that out. Women have been being empowered and given special rights and consideration for the last 50 years. Their mindset has dominated. And, you know, I don't think it comes as a surprise to anybody, but we're talking about the hatred of man. We're talking about resentment. We're talking about feminist deconstructionism, just ripping down. All the terrible, evil men. And, you know, and just put the fat, you know, mean-spirited elderly women in charge. And that's essentially what we've done. And they have instituted policies of a welfare state. You have to take care of the sick, the weak, the victimized, which happens to be everybody. And this is the way it's been going for a long time now. And MGTOW is here to say to the men trapped in this system, hey, there's a way out. Okay, this this line, this bullshit that you've been sold about what it means to be a good man is the hook through your nose that they're using to control you. It's the saddle that's on your back. It's the bridle that's in your mouth. Now, if you want to do things in life and you want to sacrifice for things in life, go right ahead. But don't do it, you know, for a woman that hates you. Don't do it for a society that looks upon you as cattle, as utility, as cannon fodder. You know, I used to play a game called Pirates, okay? Old Microprose game. And it was a pretty fun game, nothing special in the graphics department. I think they updated it. But in any case, you, would, you were a pirate and you would sail the seas and you would raid other ships and of other countries and their... Um, outposts and cities and things like that and eventually you would grow tired of the pirate lifestyle and you would retire and I found out that the thing to do before you retired was to go on one last big raid because maybe you had you know a huge pirate you know fleet right and maybe you had several ships ahoy and you had you know hundreds if not thousands of men right now if you if you're going to split up the booty with that many men, you're not going to get very much booty. So you go on these last few crazy raids where either you're going to score so big that you are going to be able to divide up that kind of booty or you're going to lose so many men that the remaining booty that you have is going to go really, really far. I know it's a horrible tactic, you know, but I wanted to retire well as a pirate. You know, I had hopes of uh, becoming a governor and of marrying the previous governor's daughter. So, you know, that's just the way it went. Sorry, men. Sorry, mateys. But it occurs to me that this is essentially how men are treated by civilization. They work the men. They get the resources. They get the tax dollars from the men. They destroy the men. They work the men to near death. And then they destroy the men. They don't take care of the men. They don't give them their fair share. And this is happening all around us. It's so bad that the men can't start businesses. The, man, the men can't build families. No, women don't build families. Those are single mothers. And those are dependents upon the state and upon, you know, this large, overbearing, matriarchal-like government, you know, that just wants to take care of everybody except for the people that it has to tax in order to pay for all of this stuff. And those are the people that they condemn. And, and, and that's the men, <laughs> right? That's me. That's you. That's most of the people listening to this particular video. And it's real obvious that the women don't see it. They, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, are they that stupid 
that they don't see it, that they're just overplaying their hand. I mean, honestly, even saying this is like, well, that's hate speech. You're not allowed to say bad things about women. It's like, well, the women are the women are being real bitches. You know, they're being real selfish bitches. And uh, yeah, everything is just getting destroyed. It's like, well, that's hate speech. You're not allowed to say that. You're just completely cucked. All right. And you're going to need to call people out when they're out of line. You know, so that's the stage that we've gotten to. And I hope you understand that this is a feminized welfare state, that women have been given the vote. Women have, you know, cultural, social power, political power, just, you know, like a man, and they've used it. And now the men in their society are taxed into extinction and hated and condemned and mocked and belittled. And their resources are used to fund a state which takes care of women and victims. You know, people on welfare, people from other countries. What a great life that is. Working your whole life, being taxed to death, and having no opportunities around you, and being spit upon the whole time. That's essentially what modern man has been reduced to. Now, I suppose, in, you know, you could, you, some people might argue, well, that's what it was all along, the powers that were in charge. It's like, no, he had a little bit more dignity than that, and at least maybe he could get together with a woman and build a family. I guess that was a comfort to him, but not now. Now he's just a tax slave. That's all he is. He's a servant to the state, and he's conditioned to fulfill this role. And if he doesn't fulfill this role, polite society, culture, his family... The institutions condemn him and shun him, and he has to go MGTOW. He has no choice. They don't want him anymore. You know, so that's how bad it is. The men have no choice. They're being kicked out of college. They're being kicked out of the workplace. They're being kicked out of politics. What's all, What's with all the Trump hate, you know? It's like, no, this is a really qualified, capable man, and he might have the exact skill set that we need right now to build and grow our way out of the problems that we're facing right now. And I'm essentially talking about all of Western civilization. And I'm talking about this idea of being this enslaved welfare state, you know, where we're victims to the suffering of strangers. Other people aren't like this. Other countries aren't like this. Muslim countries don't take in people as refugees from other countries because they're suffering. And then give them welfare. No other countries do this. No other countries are expected to do this. Men within Western civilization know that you're not supposed to do this. Because you will be overrun by people with their hands out. You will suddenly... So it's the women of Western civilization that that have brought us to this place. You know, we used to call it hard love. Right? It's like, you know, I know that you want to be told that, you know, you're this divine princess that can do no wrong and that is just this super intelligent creature and being. But the truth of it is, is that, no, you know, you can't, your priorities are, they're wrong. Female priorities cannot run civilization. They just can't. They're too security based. They're too frightened. They're too timid. They are too weak. Okay, you can't be dominated by your fears and your weaknesses and your resentments and then say, you know, this is going to guide our policies. That's a sick emotional level. That's not what men do. And this condemning of men, like all of their habits and their views and their ideas are worthless and garbage. And, you know, you can't really trust that. You have to demonetize that. Oh, because it's a man. For God's sakes, people, you all of your medicine, all of your science, all of your architecture, it's all done by men. All of your music, all of your art, all of your culture, it's all done by men. So what are you talking about? Can women do some of these things? Sure, they can do some of these things. Some of them are pretty good writers and things like that. And, you know, if they're willing to sacrifice, overcome certain biological limitations, yeah, they're pretty capable, but not as capable as a man, not as strong as a man, not as committed as a man. So what's with all the condemning of the men? 
Well, you know what it is. It's the lower level women. It's the resentful people finding fault with the whole system so that they can tear it down and finding joy and pleasure in doing it. Right. It's the weakest person, you know, who could never be on the team saying that sports are not important. It's the person who has no talent saying that these musical and artistic pursuits are not important. It's the person with the weakest intellect and the weakest mind saying that it's good character that really should matter. It's weakness. It's fear dominating. And it's happened in all the other civilizations throughout time as well. All of the large civilizations eventually become overrun by this feminized, victim-based society. You have to take care of the outsiders. It's like, no, you don't. And if you get stuck in that mindset, your civilization is going down. Intelligent men, strong men, healthy men know this. Okay, there's a difference between helping somebody, giving somebody a hand, and them trying to make you take care of them like you're their mother. That's not fit. It's not healthy. And I don't know that the women can see it. And I don't know that they care, right? I think that they enjoy tearing all of this down and deconstructing all of this. Because after all, it was men who built it. And they're in the back seat, and they've always been in the back seat. But the, you know, so they can destroy civilization, but they'll still be in the back seat. So I don't think people should be tearing Trump down. I think they should be supporting him. Right? And the idea of, you know, who do you think would be more qualified in this day and age other than the finest businessman that we have, the best negotiator, and the hardest worker, the one with the most experience in media <laughs> and in business? You think we should elect someone like you, you know, just because of the color of their hair or because they're the same sex? Or should we have, you know, the best, most qualified person? Because that's what we've got. So stop being a bitch. Start behaving like women, like intelligent adults that want to have a future rather than just some spoiled princess bitches that want to be taken care of. I mean, I know it's tempting. And I know that it doesn't seem like there's this great payoff in being a responsible, rational, mature adult when you could just lie about stuff play the victim, and demonize those people that you resent. I know it's a hard thing to stop doing, but the women that I encounter, that's all they do. They just continue to play this game, right? Like, I'm going to get in trouble for making this video. That was the bad thing. It's like, you're crazy. The bad thing is that Western civilization is being diverted to the ends of weakness and sympathy and taking care of strangers. Honestly, it's like, it's like strangers come to your house and say, we're hungry. And you take the food away from your own family, from your own kids, and you give it to the strangers. And the strangers say, oh yeah, that was pretty good, but we're still hungry and <laughs> we feel like resting. So then you put your own kids to work and your own family to work, to take care of the strangers, you know? And then the strangers are like, yeah, that's a real nice house you've got there. and Those are some real nice rooms. You think that we could stay in there? And, you know, then you're like, oh, yeah, we're just trying to be fair, and we just want to take care of people, and we're just good people, and we're just, I'm a good woman, and these men and these people and my family, they're all garbage. Take their stuff, and they'll work for you, and yeah, come on into their house. And then these strangers are like, you know what, it's a little crowded in here, you know, could you guys just leave but only come around here to take care of us and clean up after us? And the women are like, yeah, you guys, what are you doing giving a hard time to the strangers? So that's what's happening to your tax dollars. That's what Western women are doing for Western men, okay? That's your liberal, feminized, welfare state. That's what women think about it. You don't believe me? Have a conversation with some women, right? Talk to them about welfare, Talk to them about immigration. Talk to them about Trump. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not going too far. I'm saying how it is. And this is what we have to deal with as men. Now, I don't think that there's anything we can do at this stage, right? But you can save yourself. That's what you can do. You can go your own way. You can recognize the corruption of that system, what the feminists are doing, and you can start protecting yourself and building yourself up. 
And you're going to need the right kind of philosophy and mindset to do it as well. So I recommend the, the great masters, the great philosophers. Now, I don't want to get into an argument with you guys about who you like and who you don't like, right? Like, I would suggest Ayn Rand. I would suggest Nietzsche. And, you know, then you go from there. But this idea that I'm going to get into an argument with somebody because Ayn Rand accepted Social Security, it's like, no, you can talk to me about metaphysics. You can talk to me about epistemology. You can talk to me about ethics. You can talk to me about politics. You can talk to me about art. If you want to talk about philosophy, that's what you have to talk about. And if you talk about anything else, I know that I'm dealing with an idiot. I'm sorry, because those are the branches of philosophy. Uh, anyway, so that's the alternate mindset. That's the mindset to grow your way out of this dependent, victim, feminized welfare state that casts men in the roles as sacrificial animals, and it is their emotions and their virtues, both biologically and socially, their evolutionary virtues that are being exploited. And the men are too good and too noble and too decent to see the game and the dirty trick that is being played on them by their instinct to reproduce and to protect women and to build a family and to work together in a group and build a civilization. Those are the instincts that have been taken advantage of and turned to man's disadvantage. And that's what you, as a man, have to get back in touch with and rebuild and rekindle that fire. And I don't know if women are aware of what's going on around them or if they just want another piece of cake and they just want another compliment and they just want to play the victim a little longer and they just can't see the suffering of the others around them and they just can't see the future if they continue down on this path. And it's like, yeah, yeah, sure, just more immigrants. Just bring them in. Just bring them in. Right? It's like, can you see what happens at the end of that path? Do you know how any of this is being paid for? Do you know who's suffering on the other end of this? Do you care? And, you know, I'm asking this like it's a question, like it's something that, you know, we're going to have to face in the future. We're already facing it. We already have the answers. We already know that the women don't care, that they either don't see it or they don't care, right? So it's like and when it's all over and, you know, the, uh, the Christ you know, is, is on the cross, and it's like, you know, forgive them, Father. You know, they know not what they do. And it's like, no, that's not the right line. It's forgive them, Father. They don't care what they do, right? And, the, and it's Western civilization that I'm talking about here. So do women know what's going on? Can they see reality, or are they just so filled with hate and resentment and this retarded divine opinion of themselves that they think that they're, you know, that things are getting better, right? I mean, I'd like to know. Do, do women think that the world is getting better or is it getting worse? Like in Europe, okay, as more and more immigrants are coming in and there's more and more civil strife and the societies are being ripped and torn down, okay, and they're running out of money and they can't maintain the police force and the local population, the local people are being, you know, terrorized, and the local politicians are like, this is great, globalism, we love people, come in here, we'll take care of you. So that's the scenario, and it's all over Europe, and it's coming to America. So what I honestly want to know is if women are looking at that and saying, yeah, this is great, this is good stuff, or are they looking at that and saying, no, that's not what's happening. What's actually happening is, you know, magical unicorns are coming in here and flying around. Do women see what's happening, and are they okay with what's happening? That's what I want to know. So let me know what you think about this in the comments section below. And please like, share, comment, subscribe, donate, and join me again, Howard Dare, as I plan to have more content for you. Thank you, MGTOW.